Hey everyone, welcome to the Automata Project. This is Mr. Z, and this is a 10 to 14 day project where we go through the steps of the engineering design process to design what is known as an automata. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull up a short clip of a video demonstrating several automata. And essentially what these use are these things called cams, which are rotary disks that can spin in uh, translational or rotational ways to generate some kind of movement on the top when you rotate a handle. So we want to design this from start to finish and depending on what resources you have available in your class you might have to design some things yourself or bring them from home or 3D print them but it really just depends on how or what is available to you and what is provided to you. So to start this entire project off, we have here what is known as a Gantt chart. A Gantt chart is a visual representation of what you will be doing throughout this project, and it's a very clear way of communicating when you'll be working on something, as well as the natural progression of the project. So for example, today would be day one, the first day of the project, and each of these days also is broken down into like a 45 minute period. If you're wondering like how much time is in a day, you know, is it the whole day or is it a partial day? So 45 minutes per day. But on day one, we're going to create a Gantt chart that is this over here, as well as start creating a decision matrix. And a decision matrix is something I'm going to be talking about uh, at the at, <laughs> in a little bit in this video. So this Gantt chart's important and it is something I'm going to want you to like pause the video for and make in a spreadsheet. You could use Google Spreadsheet or you can use uh, the Microsoft Spreadsheet and that's totally fine. If you're wondering how I generated this table over here, I just use the table generation options on the top there. Um, typing is pretty easy. You just type and to change the, to add these color blocks in there, you just have to use the fill tool to select some blocks and then you know fill in a color like that. So a Gantt chart is telling me right now to create this Gantt or uh, what I'm doing. So the Gantt chart and decision matrix, that's day one. On day two, I'm hoping that this decision matrix is finished and that it allows you to kind of limit or and I give you an idea of what you want your automata to be. So a lot of automatas are based off other automatas because if this is something you are working for for the first time you might not have a clear grasp of how they work or a, a, like a clear picture of what you want to do. So just base it off of one that already exists and that will give you the, the foundation for your project. On day three, after you've picked that automata, we're going to do what is known as a reverse engineering analysis. Just because you found one online that you like or have an idea of how it works, we need to sit down with that project and we got to kind of take it apart. What is important? How are you going to build it? What is it made of? Why is it made of that? What cams are you going to use? All that is going to be part of the reverse engineering analysis and that's going to just give you a really clear idea of what you're going to need to do to finish off this project. Once you have that idea and all set up in place, the next part is going to be to use Autodesk Inventor to design cams in 3D and then hopefully use those cams and generate a 3D model over days 5, 6, and 7 and then putting a simple animation by day 7 to essentially when you crank that handle in Autodesk Inventor, it causes the cams to move and provide some kind of vertical motion. So it is doable and we're not going to be designing the things on top of the box or those boxes uh, that we that I kind of pulled up earlier. So <laughs> we're going to be designing just the cams, the handlebar, and the box, not what goes on top of it. So these ducks would not have to be 3D modeled. That dragon would not have to be 3D modeled. So rest assured, uh, everyone will be capable of achieving this project. After day seven, once that model is made and it's been approved by your teacher, then from days eight to 10 or eight to 14, depending on how much time you wanna to give to your students or how much time they need for this project, uh, they will be designing their real life model, 3D printing their camps or cutting them out of foam board, uh, but they'll be going through and designing all the rest of their projects 
uh, over those next few days, and then hopefully by the end, turning in and presenting a real life model. Okay, so Gantt charts are very important, and it's good practice to make one here and there. So if you'd like, go ahead, pause this video now, and design either this Gantt chart, or if you dislike this Gantt chart or feel like there are important steps missing, simply modify it and create a Gantt chart for you to achieve what you want to achieve in your project. Okay, pause now. And I'm going to hope you pause the video because we are moving on to the next step. And that is to create a decision matrix. Now a decision matrix is a means of helping you decide what project you want to kind of go with or what idea would be a good idea. It's like when you mathematically give values to different ideas or different projects or different portions of a project so that you can come up with an idea yourself. So I've started developing a decision matrix down here and I called it decision matrix automata and I went online and I scoured the internet and I looked for automata projects that I liked. So in my case I like this boat one over here where when you spin the handle the waves move and the boat moves back and forth uh, and the boat is controlled and the waves are controlled by different cams. Uh, this Doctor Who one was really cool where the TARDIS is spinning and the person is kind of bobbing up and down. We have this water fountain one, this one with birds where they're kind of like talking to each other and then another very similar one with a dolphin. And I thought all five of these ideas were great and that I'd want to make one based on one of these five ideas, but I'm just unsure which idea to go with. So I set it up in this decision matrix and I based it off of five criteria. So this criteria is the cost. How much would it cost to make each of these? Uh, the number of small pieces, you know, the more pieces something has, the, the more potentially hazardous it could be um, and the longer it takes to, you know, put together. Uh, trending culture. That just means like how popular would it be if I showed this to somebody? So would it be something they think is really cool or is it something like, okay, that's, that's neat, but no one's going to really notice it. Lasting entertainment. Is this something that I would use from time to time or would I use it all the time? You know, the lasting entertainment factor and then the possibility of injury. So does it have a lot of sharp pieces, a lot of small parts? things like that that could potentially lead to injury. And these are just five criteria that I came up with. What I'd like you to do is not only have these five criteria, but also come up with two more criteria that you could rank these toys off of. So for each of these toys, I'm gonna to rank them from one to four. And that four is partially an arbitrary number, but four is meaning the best for you, and one is meaning the worst. So for example, this boat one, uh, the boat and the, the waves and everything, they're made out of paper. So that's probably really cheap. And because it's really cheap, it doesn't cost you a lot of money. Uh, so in terms of cost, I would say that's a four. That's really good. Now for this TARDIS over here, that's probably made out of foam board. That could be like a little figurine and everything that I might have to buy from a store. So it's probably a little bit more expensive. So I would say like a one or a two. Uh, this water fountain one also, probably elaborate. It's got a lot of a backdrop to it. So I'm going to go ahead and say a one. I'm going to actually bump the TARDIS one up to two because that's way more expensive than that. Uh, the birds here, those definitely have to be purchased outside. So that's going to be expensive. So I'm going to say a one for that. So everything can have the same value as well, just depending on it. Um, and that's 3D printed, so it won't be super expensive, but uh, there will definitely be a little bit of cost to it. So we'll say a three. Okay, so I just rank the cost for all of these, and then I go to the next, number of small pieces. There's not a lot of small pieces here other than the cams, but there are a lot of cams here. So if four is the best, meaning the least amount of small pieces, and one's the worst, I would probably say a two. This one doesn't have a lot of pieces to it, so a three. That's got a lot of stuff to it, so let's keep that out of one. Very few pieces on this one, so I'll say a four. And then on this one, it's also... Uh, looks like there's fewer pieces, uh, but there's definitely still some pieces involved. So let's say a two or a three. I'll just go with a three. Okay, so I'm going through and I'm giving each of them a value from one to four. And eventually, let's just go ahead and 
fill in some arbitrary values here for these ones. I'm going to go through and add all these totals up plus the extra two that you're going to come up with. So 4 plus 2 plus 3, 9, 10, 11, 12, 5, 9, 12, 14, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7, 8, 9, 13, 14, 8, 12, uh, 18. Okay, and based on this decision matrix, the idea that I'm going to base my project off of is this dolphin over here. Okay, so it's essentially going to be moving it back and forth, and then the waves possibly are just going to be fixed, or maybe I'll adjust that, who knows. But this is the winner right here, and now I have a base direction for where to start my project. And I'm going to start examining this one on day three. But you know what? Since we're kind of ahead, we can move our reverse engineering analysis to day two. But it really depends how you want to adjust that. But that's the next step. So we create our decision matrix, um, did a decision matrix, found some ideas. And I guess I did that a little quick because I already technically have them made. But that would have been your day two right there. And then you've picked it. And hopefully by day three, you know what you want to base your project off of. Okay, so this video is going to cover days one and day two. The next video is going to cover day three, um, and we will move from there. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, this is Mr. Z signing out. Peace.